Hi and welcome. My name is Yannick Tuzinga Laflamme. I'm a physical therapist and professor at the University of Sherbrooke. We are located in Quebec, Canada, and I'm here to talk to you about the pain and disability driver management model, a model we proposed a few years ago to enhance the physical therapy management of persons with low back pain. Well, a recent study showed that only 54% of the treatment provided by physical therapists were treatment who were recommended by clinical practice guidelines. Some could say that we may be part of the problem. Some could say that we may be part of this, the solution. I think that if we want to be part of the solution, we need to do something. Now, there are solutions, solutions that were highlighted by brilliant researchers. First, we need to reduce the gap between evidence and practice. We need to eliminate low-value care. We also need to take an interest in the cost effectiveness of our interventions. And most importantly, and this is what I'm going to focus on, we need to develop and test complex interventions. And of course, we need to put more emphasis on knowledge mobilization and probably improve the system as well. But with a focus on development and testing of complex intervention, I should say that we need to structure ourselves. Our job is to be time. We need to pay much more attention to complex intervention and a simple intervention to a complex problem has proven not to be really the solution. So how can we structure ourselves? Well, yes, we need to develop interventions that are based on low back pain mechanism and also take into account the patient's phenotype. We need a better structure. We know that most cases of low back pain are non-specific. I do like the label non-specific but it doesn't help us to provide specific care. And that is what we need to do to improve the outcomes. We need to find specifically what are the drivers of pain and disability for our, our patients. So what is it that we need? What kind of perspective that we need? And this is a qu quote from Martin Rabe's paper published in 2016. We need a flexible biopsychosocial approach that will make it possible to identify the multiple relevant dimensions present in a patient and thus facilitate targeted care with the regards of dominant factors of that individual. The PDDM, I, sh I should uh, name it, um, is a tool, is a diagnostic framework that could help you to capture the complete clinical profile of your, of your patient. So it takes into account the um, deficits or issues with body functions and structures, personal factors, as well as factors from the environment. Finally, the last domain, mainly a driver of disability, relates to contextual drivers, factors from the person's environment. The idea is to assess for the presence of these drivers and establish the patient pro profile, which should facilitate or at least inform the treatment plan. And now, in the context of low back pain, there are and many other musculoskeletal conditions. Nociception would be mainly somatic and can arise from many potential body structures where nociceptors are activated. So basically, can you classify your patient? Can you use a classification system, whether it's McKinsey classification system, treatment-based classification system, order? If you can classify your patient, into that, into that classification system, you have a responder and you'll probably be able to identify specific exercises with that person. If you're not able to classify him, because we know we cannot classify 100% of patients, 100% of the time into a classification system, then you'll have a non-responder. So maladaptive conditions or maladaptive, uh, or, or maladaptive factors that are known to influence pain and dis disability. First step is just to be aware of this, know them. For example, uh, I'm sure you're aware of pain catastrophizing or a person with poor pain coping strategies. Those can be labeled them as maladaptive coping strategies. There are also concept of fear avoidance beliefs where fear is going to drive an avoidance behavior and mostly based on belief, uh, pain related anxiety, pain related fear, fear of movement. There's also perceptions and expectations in regards to pain or treatment. For example, so that completes the presentation of the five domains of the pain and disability driver management model.
Can it help you to target the problematic domain or drivers influencing your patient's pain and disability? Just to pragmatically um, bring this into the clinic, let's, uh, let's take two case examples and try to identify how, with those case examples, could the model serve to drive uh, you to um, um, a better treatment. So patient A, John Smith. John is a 42-year-old mechanic. Steve is much less nociceptive, probably a bit more uh, influenced by drivers coming from the nervous system. There's there's no specific pattern of pain, but yet uh, there's probably evidence of central nervous system hypersensitivity in there. There's evidence of comorbidity as well, and there's much more evidence of maladaptive cognitions. So the cognitive effective drivers are probably going to be much more harder to uh, to address, but they're going to be needed to address. And same thing for contextual drivers. But don't forget, we are not treating pain. We are not treating low back pain or neck pain. We are treating persons. So we need to remain person-centered and uh, uh, providing high-value care. It, it's important to have a good look at what we do, but it's also important to consider how we do it. I'd like to thank you for your attention. If you have questions, you can uh, access uh, me in, with those with my email or uh, on Twitter. And I hope you enjoyed this talk. And if you want to read more about the model, uh, have a look at my publications that were done in the last year in regards to the model. Thank you for your attention.